Hi, I'm Kevin Newen. Kevin Newen is an investigative journalist and digital forensics reporter with ABC News Verify. Today, I'm going to be walking you through the tools and techniques that I use to identify and debunk AI images. We're going to start really easy, then we're going to get complicated. Some of these examples I've seen, others I haven't, so let's start. So in this video, her fingers are flying all over the place. At one point, it either bends like a snake or it comes off her hand completely. If this was to happen in real life, someone has been horribly injured. AI is very good at generating images of things that it has been exposed to. Hands aren't one of them. It's not that there isn't enough photos of hands, it's just that hands are so different, so inherently complex compared to other parts of the human anatomy. Let's take a step back. An AI is not a person. It is kind of like a probability calculator. AI doesn't inherently know what a car is. Instead, you're showing it images of cars, labeling it as a car, and then over time, the AI would recognize that cars tend to have four wheels, a steering wheel, an engine, they tend to be driving on roads. And as that data becomes more diverse, it'll be able to tell the difference between vans and dune buggies. AI is trained with images of people in the same way. So because hands have an inherently complex structure from your fingers to your knuckles and your joints and your fingernails, and because they can appear in so many different configurations. What do you mean by configurations? Well, you can see your hand from front on, jazz hands and spirit fingers, back, front, knuckles, fist bump, high five, slapping, clapping, gripping, whatever this thing is. It's not as uniform or as straightforward as say someone's face, which is eyes tend to appear here, your nose is here, your mouth is here. Pina coladas, baby. The human brain has been developed to kind of recognize even the most minor mistakes in the human anatomy. So when there are errors or misalignments or kind of discrepancies, they tend to be much more conspicuous. Other things that are really challenging to generate are ears, teeth, elbows, toes. You know, a few too many steps away from nature. They all kind of suffer the same restraints on data availability. The next step would be to conduct a contextual analysis. Sometimes you gotta ask the absurd questions, like can a baby be doing a runway walk with penguins or ride a white tiger? God, I hope I don't have to explain that one too much. In this image here, the tents are being held up without much support. The shadows being cast by the people don't match. And the strap on his phone is way too long and impractical. This man has sleeves but is bare chested, which would be an absolutely iconic fashion choice if it was real. Often, if you look in the background as well, you might see things like traffic signs being in the middle of the road or being way taller than they actually should be. Buttons might be in the wrong places on a person's jacket. You notice things like light fixtures don't connect to anything. So in summary, an image or video should obey the laws of physics. Few AI generated videos have made me mad. Why? Someone told me that this was fake and sent it to me and I thought that I was being stitched up. There's a few reasons that this is so genuine looking. In particular, the movement is quite naturalistic. Um, that's actually the way people move when they're doing a TED talk. And I'm assuming that's what the data was trained off. The problem with this is that it's a video. Our brains are really, really lazy. We tend to only really focus on details that are important. So we don't take all that sensory information in at once. What ends up happening is the brain tends to fill in the gaps and take shortcuts. So I would introduce a circuit breaker. I've split this 10 second video into 315 frames using a program called FFmpeg. It's free, it's open source, it's a simple command line. Looking at things this way, the tails become a lot more pronounced. The skin stretches and floats off the face. It's overly smooth. For about 10 frames here, you could see that her fingernails are backwards. When you look at it more carefully, you notice that her tongue doesn't move in her mouth and her nostrils don't really move either. Where the left forearm meets the biceps, there's no skin folds. And if you were to get really creepy about it and take a look at her teeth, you'll notice that they change size ever so slightly. So in summary, zoom in and slow it down. Of all the different kinds of AI generation out there, I think the most dangerous one is face swap. I'm just as real as you and me. Oh my gosh, okay. <laughs> And it has such a chilling effect on democracy, on trust, on privacy, on women's safety, on our sense of self and our sense of reality. 
We more commonly refer to this as deepfakes. So if you've ever used a face filter on your Snapchat or Instagram or TikTok, you've used some level of deepfake technology. So face swaps require a source and a target. So the face you want to put in and the face that you want to take out. For the source, you would ideally have images from different lighting angles, expressions. <laughs> Where the AI comes in is that it tries to predict what that face would look like under different conditions. And it's in the process of this alignment that you begin to find all the errors. The kind of visual inspections that I might conduct are blending an edge analysis, blink analysis, error level analysis, speed analysis, and a luminance gradient analysis. So luminance is about lighting. It's about brightness. So when you take one face and then put it in a different environment, sometimes the reflections or the direction of the light or even the intensity of the light will change. Area level analysis is about looking at pixel distribution and value. If you imagine a picture or a photo as a puzzle piece, when you break it up into all those pieces, you should be able to put it back together and it should look the same. But if in that process you swap out a few pieces or you remove some, when you put it back together, you'll notice that it doesn't retain the same shape or it looks different. An error level analysis is about being able to find where those changes are. Something a bit more specific to modern AI is speed. In particular, how fast we talk. AI doesn't know what words are, per se. I uh, adore movie theaters, but I'm not a movie buff. When AI is trying to produce videos of people talking. I felt scared. I felt angry at the world. Good. They've just memorized the shape of their mouth and their lips when they say a specific word. I dream that no one was real. And sometimes the speed of that doesn't match how their mouth should be moving. Maybe I'm just crazy. Hopefully you have a few more tools and techniques up your sleeve to spot AI. And if you want to know more, we're going to do more of these videos. So please subscribe.